Alrighty, everyone, welcome back to the absolutely stunning York Peninsula. It's putting on an absolute show. Look at those pinky, purpley clouds over there. Popular demand has requested. I'm going to do a video on catching calamari or squid, southern calamari, whatever you want to call them, off of this thing or off your boats as well. Very, very similar fishing. Now, today I'll be running you through absolutely everything that I do. Um, trying to, I guess, keep it nice and simple for all the viewers that are brand new to squid fishing and maybe boat fishing in general and targeting southern calamari because a lot of it transfers to your um, land-based adventures as well. So, your basic kayak tends to look something like this. Now, this is a basic pedal kayak, but your basic kayak will minus these and you just use your paddle there to paddle out. Pedal kayaks, could not recommend them more. They are absolutely fantastic things. Um, make fishing so much more enjoyable and also paddling around so much more enjoyable and a lot easier as well. Um, your pedal kayaks or your paddle kayaks, sorry, will tend to be a bit more, a bit shorter maybe, not as wide, um, but the fishing kayaks tend to be a little bit wider than most kayaks. Um, and with a bit of extra customization and a bit of extra money that you throw into it, you'll tend to have a bit more of a refined shell of a kayak that turns into a sort of custom built, I suppose, um, kayak that suits you. And that's the beauty of this whole game is you can really customize it for yourself and for your needs. So I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Now with that extra bit of money and time and experience you'll find yourself owning a kayak something like that so the difference you've got a sounder makes life so much easier two rod holders you've got a net and um, little sort of storage zones anchor lots and lots of little things that you keep on sort of adding on to your kayak to make it not only easy for you I guess most enjoyable for you as well. Um, there's a little sort of soft, or not little, but quite a big soft esky at the back there. And then, um, yeah, I'll take you through what rods I use for squidding and uh, basic sort of techniques. Okay, setups. Now this here is a Brigade Flip. It's a Tanayi, so it's a Japanese made rod. It is an absolute jet of a rod. So good. It is eight foot five. It's a medium um rod as well so it's a little bit stiffer in the tip it's got a little bit more power than your medium light sort of setups paired with it i've got a 2500 mrl das i think it is a mx 2508 pe so that's the precise name of it um eight foot five it's a bit long um then sort of ideal for a uh, a kayak rod and if you're a beginner I'd recommend a bit more of a, or a bit of a shorter rod. So around the, the seven foot mark is going to increase that um, ease of usability. Um, this rod here, perfect land based setup. It's a decent all rounder. So this is what I've got at the moment. So my backup or my sleeper rod setup, or it's going to be revealed to you a bit later, a, a technique that I use, and this will be used on this rod. It is a Shimano Katana 702XL. Uh, one to three kilo rod it has got a 2000 s caldia caldia fc 2000 s on it a little bit of a small reel it's a bit lighter this is a good backup whiting rod as well so i rarely target just squid or just whiting it's usually both and then maybe some snook thrown in there as well it's probably a good little snook setup but yeah awesome little rod cheap as well this was actually my first uh sort of entry into the graphite rods was a uh, katana not this rod specifically a bit of an older one but really good intro into your brim fishing whiting flats squid awesome all-rounder let's get out there you so we're on the water now i just thought while i'm just paddling out nice and slowly it's a bit shallow here so i'm just sort of using my foot pedals because i can't be bothered paddling but um, just while I'm paddling out, 
I was just thought it would, now would be a good time to just to chat about uh, location, weather and conditions I suppose. So weather is going to be your number one thing that you check. I tend to check the weather five, six times before I head out somewhere just because of, you know, I want to have a great session. I want to catch loads of fish but my number one priority all the time and it should be your number one priority as well is your safety because there's only one of you there's plenty of days in the year to go fishing but there's only one of you and um, if you do something to yourself or have a bad experience it can really trouble you for the rest of your life and put you in danger so um, a general rule for a kayak um, especially for if you're a beginner is if it's white capping so if you do there's a few sort of observations that we do so we do um a prior sort of check or observation of the weather if it's around the i think your upper lip your upper limit would be sort of around 19 20 k's an hour um for a beginner if you're a bit more experienced and a bit more confident then maybe 22 23 k's an hour 24 maybe depending on if it's a onshore offshore your wind direction and then there's a secondary observation so when we get to the or when you get to the location if it's white capping it's probably not going to be a great session for you you're going to be quite uncomfortable out there out there so making sure that um you do the prior checks do your observations when you get there and make sure that if the wind sort of picks up before a certain time on the forecast make sure you're in about an hour before because wind can come through earlier, but it can also come through later as well. But just to play it on the safe side, there's no point um, working outside of a safety zone or your comfort zone at all, because that's when dangerous things tend to happen. So without that safety stuff, I know it's pretty boring and can sound like a broken record, but we'll get onto the fun stuff like your, con your conditions and your tides and all that sort of stuff. So ideally, the clearest water possible is best. Um, Squid are a sight hunter. We know that from their massive eyes that they use to pick up um, prey, even in low light conditions. So they're a sight hunter. Number one, we got clear water. Excellent. Perfect. Number two, tide movement. Well, squid, a lot of people will tell you squid can be caught on dodge tide, which they absolutely can. You can bag out on a dodge tide. I've done it before. But generally speaking, your best sessions are going to be when there's tide movement. So at the moment, it's barely any tide movement, but there's a big incoming in the afternoon. So that's when I'm thinking I'm going to go out for whiting, hopefully, if I get some squid this morning. Land-based, you want to match your sunrise with your high tide. Those are going to be your best days. But um, out here, it doesn't really matter too much. But just getting out on the water when there's a tide change or during a tide change, is going to be your best bet for catching squid and catching fish as well. Um, weather conditions, well, we've got a pretty much a perler of a day today. Um, no clouds, so my favourite squid conditions, I'm pretty sure most of you would have heard this if you follow my Instagram. I upload lots of uh, tips and tricks on my Instagram, practically weekly, but um, depending on how much I can get out. Uh, Overcast is going to be your best. That's your number one. I think full sun is probably number two. Partly cloudy can sort of be interesting. Sometimes a squid like it, sometimes they don't like the change in light. It can make them a bit timid, but if you've got an overcast day, perfect. Seasons, out on your boat doesn't really matter too much, but uh, generally speaking, your springtime, is when you get a lot of squid a lot of sort of medium-sized squid i should say summer you get a fair few squid but they're a little bit smaller winter is when you get a few squid but they tend to be a bit bigger and autumn here in south australia just seems to be a bit of a a dud part of the year where you can in some locations do quite well especially if you're fishing adelaide base though and through the metropolitan area it can be a bit duddish and you can either have a really good session and catch loads or just have a completely average stinking session where you don't do much at all you just have a great time out in the water which is also okay so without those or with those conditions 
uh, noted down today partly cloudy i think it's going to come overcast later in the afternoon which is going to be around that tide change which is perfect it's been a bit blowy but due to this location and the massive flat zone that we have it doesn't tend to stir up the water too much so we've got pretty clear water there's another tick we've got a tide change today there's another tick so on paper looks to be a good session but obviously things can change so um let's see how we go i'll get into the techniques and i'll uh, rig up my jigs and talk to you about what jigs that i use out here as well so let's get out there let's have some fun important to be prepared so on my way out especially if you've got a pedal kayak you can do this quite easily but i'm going to introduce our first new technique which is going to be similar to a, a teaser method but without the float so if you've been following this channel for a while you know that i absolutely adore the use of teasers i think they're absolutely amazing things so recently in a session with uh, jordan sa fishing a lot of you will know him if you know me because we uh, tend to fish a fair bit together he's quite popular these days um so went out with jordan sa fishing and i caught a tommy while i was fishing for whiting and i thought i don't have a float on me i'm just going to try just drifting it down no weights no nothing like that and it turned the session from a average session to an absolutely on fire squid session and i was getting basically nothing on the jigs whether it was due to water uh, warmer water conditions the conditions of the day i'm not too sure but it just went turned on as soon as i put these on so just coming up to a squid mark here actually so i'm going to try it today in a, uh, a location that i haven't tried it before if you don't ha know how to put a teaser on i've got a quite a small swivel here it's a lot easier if you've got a larger swivel you go through the top through the top lip up through that one and then the most important part you need to get it through the bottom one as well because if you just have it through the top then you tend to rip a few tommies off now that's ready to go simple as chucking it out opening your bail arm and just letting it peel line out now with a stronger drift i think it would be better off adding some weight to it so it tends to sit sort of mid-water rather than floating along the surface what it tends to be doing at the moment because the drift is quite quick but it will just gradually start to sink which is perfect so squid jig selection daylight today sun is out so we're going to use golden underfoil my one of my favorite jigs to use here is the Gancraft king george whiting gold underfoil mixed with a little bit of silver underfoil real gun jig so we'll use that as well as the pink headed shrimp which is also an absolute dynamite jig at this location size wise 3.0 we are drifting in 3.2 meters of water so quite shallow so 3.0 good size and um, we'll see how we go in terms of sink rate if we choose to use a 3.0 or a 3.5 but i think a 3.0 should be perfect for now you just need to let it sink for a little bit longer so let's get out there let's see if we can uh, get a few squid like that literally as soon as the jig hit the water we're on to a squid <laughs> i'm just gonna plug that into the sounder here Not a huge one by any stretch of the imagination but it is a lovely squid so we'll grab him and he'll go straight into the bucket now the bucket has been a little bit of a game changer for me because i was sick of cleaning crap loads of ink off my kayak every session 
so that just helped me out big time. Let's see if we can get another one there. And we've got another squid on here. We do. So that's the, the teaser working perfectly there. Working just as it should. So we'll just tighten up. Start to wind in. Oh, he's let go. If they let go, just let them come back on it. Oh. He's got it again. Nice and gentle. Now he hasn't got a hold of this. I'm just reeling it in slowly so he sees it. And I'll quickly just take it out the water. Pop it in there. I'll swap over. Give this one a little bit of line. And he's on it. There's two squid in almost as many minutes. This one's a little bit nicer actually as well, so I'll just uh, put this teaser back in the water, just in case there's another one hanging around. Lovely, this one's a nice little one. Now, when netting a squid, it's important just to take your time. And also, if possible, I think we've got another squid on here, on the teaser. If possible, turning it away from you and then netting will save you a bit of cleaning. Now, if I am correct, we should have a squid on this one. Yep, and we do. <laughs> I don't think it's a huge one, but it's a squid. We'll let him just have a munch on it for a little while. Pop that one in there. Pop that one back out there. Bit of action for your uh, Monday morning. let go of it. I think if I go in nice and slowly here, I should be able to get him in close enough. Might just drop it down just here, just to get him back. And maybe, maybe, maybe we'd be able to see him eat it. And he's actually got this jig. So, just like that. Onto another beautiful cephalopod, and there's another one actually on this teaser as well. So, or well, there was another one on this teaser. Actually, a little bit tangled up the top there as well. So, that teaser just being in the water though, we'll just keep that one around. This one's actually not a bad little squid either. So plenty of action happening straight off the bat here. Let's get the net on this fella again. Like that. Pointing that squid away from me because I don't want to get inked. Not this morning. Puff them in the esky. Oh, we're not in the esky. Now how do I know if there's one on this well? Good question I hear you asking. So it's if this line starts to fly out really quickly or 
if the line stops, like so. So I'll just sort of get that bail arm closed now and see if we have one grabbing onto it. But very, very good start to this morning. So we're on three squid. Excellent start. Let's get going. So no sooner, oh, I'm getting hit by a snook or something. No sooner do I stop the camera, we're onto a ginormous squid or something here. It's a very good, this is actually quite a nice little squid that we got on here. And I was actually getting hit by snook as I was reeling that in quickly, my squid jig just then. Yeah, it's another lovely squid. Great start. So I'm taking this very slowly, just gaining almost millimetres at a time. It's coming in nice and slowly. And if he jumps off, my jig's just back there as well. If he manages to let go of the jig now, or the teaser now, it's no biggie. So I want him to sort of let go with a few jolts like that. Get this in the boat. Hold your rod. Give him a little bit of line. Just wait for him, wait for him. Should be on it pretty soon. Give him a little bit more line. There he is. Lovely. So this is actually quite a good squid again. So we're definitely gonna need the net here so we get that prepped and organized. Make sure there's no tangles on that. As we're fighting this fella, This one's just pinned. Face him away as best you can. Beautiful. Another fantastic squid. So we'll get this guy. Now, sort this fella out. Place him in that way. Make sure he doesn't get me. And uh, we'll try to actually get a cast in happened in the last couple of minutes so I'm just going to start that drift again so beauty of having a sounder in this situation I can quite literally look back on the exact track that I drifted and I can drift over that exact same patch and hopefully pick up a few more squid so keen to get into it again on again and I think that my teaser actually had one on too so we must have gone over a little patch there but not quite on the same drift line, so. Yeah, we do have one on there. Not a big one, but we do have one on. Or it's a bit of weight, but um, here's a tip for you as well. I tend to never really drift exactly over the exact same line that I drift over, that I've already drifted over. I tend to mix it up just a little bit, not by much, but just by a little bit. And that will keep every sort of bit of ground fresh that I go over. And the squid, they're not gonna really stay overly stationary. So if you just move, whether it's only five meters to one side, and that is absolutely spot on too, that is fine. Actually drifting an odd direction, that's okay. It's a bit chaotic at the moment, but chaos is always good when you're catching loads of fish. But let's have a look at this squid, shall we? I think he's back on it. 
Let's hook him up here. Get a hold up for you. Yeah, he's definitely back on that. So we'll get this guy quickly in, but that is just perfection at its finest. Gancraft, King George Whiting, doing what it does best, and that's catching loads of squid. So we'll quickly get back out there. Full of there being a squid on it. Oh, actually had a, a big hit on our rod there too, so there's more than one. So we'll leave that teaser in the water, and then we'll try and get this other one. Just keep on loosening off that drag. Let him take it. And there's that one there. Lovely. We've still got this one on as well, on the teaser, which is always a good tip as well, is to leave a jig in the water or a teaser in the water. One of the two, they're both good methods and they both work if you keep them in the water because the squid are going to hang around if they see one of their mates or a jig in the water or one of their mates holding on to something they're always going to hang around they're going to feel more inclined to stick around and also hit your jigs it doesn't stress them out too much which is good we're going to quickly sort this guy out here it's a bit awkward but I'll get him in He's not on fantastically well. Actually, he's on by two tentacles, so try and lift him in. This guy there is full of water as well, so he's gonna have a big spray as soon as I unhook him, I think. Just need to tilt him down before he does it. Perfect. Just drop this back in the water here. Sort this guy out. In that bag and I think do we still have him on no we don't so we're going to quickly but surely get back out behind that teaser free time that I turn the camera off that we get another squid so <laughs> literally probably half a second after turning the camera off I managed to hook up again which is always good fun. And as you can see, my chart plotter is going to be full of marks, especially squid marks in this location. There's plenty. Especially this time of year, it's a hot time of the year here. And we've actually got another one on that, which is lovely. We'll just let him munch on it for a while, which is another good tip as well. So if you're dealing with one, leave the bail arm open on that one, let him munch it, let him get comfortable. And then when you're ready, reel it in. <laughs> How good is this? I think that was number six. In, uh, I reckon we've been out in the water for, or we've been fishing for probably 15 minutes. So plenty of them around. It's always good signs. All over the reel, that's all right. And all over my pants. So let's just get this one sorted actually. Let's get this one in. Oh, hello. Do up the drag first maybe, might be a good idea. is <laughs> and just like that we're on to another beautiful one <laughs> it's trust me um it's not this easy all the time i wish it was but uh this is squid number eight i think in not even half an hour so they are just uh fired up this morning i I think that's fair enough to say. Um, there's been, oh, this guy's just hooked. Um, there's been times where I've got triple bags here, obviously with more than one person. 
on board of a boat, not a kayak. Yeah, but we've got triple bags before. So, certainly a uh, hot spot if you ask me and a lot of people that fish here as well. But we'll just get this one back in. Just a little cheeky cast behind. Get this guy in there. And get this one back there. And uh, we'll see if we can get a couple more. <laughs> now, I believe we've got another one on here. See the a squid or some weed. I do think it's the former, not the latter. I'm going to tease her again. It's just a joyful way of squidding using this teaser. It's just incredible. So something so simple can be so effective and it is a squid. Which is good. Our jig is just in the water there. So if he lets go, it's not the end of the world. We'll just try and get him off just about now. It's perfect. Pop him there. And then we'll take our rod. See how we go. There we go. He's not a big fella, this one. Just a little guy. Any size is welcome, I don't discriminate. Get that teaser straight back in, just in case he has a mate that likes a, likes a taste of Tommy Ruff. This guy hooked quite nicely, so try and get him in the bag without getting sprayed. Turns out he does have a mate. <laughs> so, that's a good reason to why to keep your, your jigs in the water. It's because, or oh, your teaser in the water, because there is most, more often than not, a mate that likes the taste of Tommy Ruff, and uh, he happened to be right next to him and was hungry as well, so. Well, I'll uh, come back to you when we got him on. And uh, just like that, we got him on. <laughs> Literally uh, five seconds after I've seen you guys last. Got him on. I'll just uh, give the lens a courtesy wipe. Make sure that everyone can see everything. squid on the teaser just yet but oh yes we do I lied we do have a squid on again so this is only a little fella so we're just going to get this guy in nice and quickly the one that we got on the teaser is just a little bit better so I believe that's squid number nine or maybe number ten not too sure I'm going to give it a count when we're on 14 and we'll just try and get this guy in so we might be uh, fishing for whiting a bit sooner than I expect but I think I'll try and keep as much of that off camera as possible I don't have a whole heap of space on this I'm not sure why I'm telling you this but now you know <laughs> give him a little bit of time to come over and say hello and then just go skadoosh and grab onto it just a little bit of time. Shouldn't take him too long. Wooding is so hot at the moment. Um, I'm gonna just leave the teaser just chilling there, just in case you know I have a squid with a follower. But I'm just gonna try and film some live eats for you. So try and get them on film taking the squid jag, because I know I love it when I see that happening. So um, hopefully you guys too as well.
and I just yeah like a stand up out here enjoy my time in this uh, beautiful part of the world got one on it is a very little squid it's a squid nonetheless I think he might fall off maybe not really too fussed about losing this fella see how we go lifting him in yep fell off just there and managed to unload all of his ink right in my kayak but we'll see if he's got a mate oh you little bugger lovely so this is the technique as well um oh may have seen one yep saw one just eat that just then don't think you would have seen it i've got polarized sunnies on but um that is the technique what you have to do let your jig sink number one that's the most important thing is to let your jig sink number two don't get inked no number two is to I'll just let it sit there so let my jig sink now we're still probably four meters of water here so for the sake of demonstration i'm going to give it a bit less time and just hook a squid before i can oh not quite pretty sure that was a squid that i had on then anyway go bang 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 so i'm whipping the rod while taking in the slack line and that just allows the jig to have that darting act that was a squid there as well have that darting action literally just cleaned off my jig popped it in the water saw this fella just jump up to it and he goes see if there's another one literally just there <laughs> I literally just popped my jig in the water for a split second just to clean the last little bit off and then as soon as I did this, I was rudely in interrupted about my battery going flat. I literally just put my jig in the water for a half a second and was onto a little squid then so good signs that we're in the right zone again. So uh, I'll keep you posted if I get some on film that would be sweet as. So I've just given him uh, given my squid a count and I need two more for my bag limit of 15 here in South Australia so yeah really 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 good morning you can't really ask for much better than this oh that was another squid I just had another one on so if he comes back bummer so the squid as the day's gone on a little bit not much the squid have gotten a little bit smaller. There he is. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's off. Oh well, what can you do? There might be another one hanging around. Like that. He's actually not a bad one, this one. So it got Two hits, probably lost one. The other one stayed on. This is actually quite a nice size squid, I think. It's not bad at all. Let's see if he's got a mate around at all. Has he got another friend? I'm not too sure. Can't really see one. He's not on awfully well. This fella. There we go. The old lift in. In the bag, you go. Get off, please. Like that, and oh, he's done the old spray room. One more. Let's see if I can get one close to the close to the kayak. Hey, okay? the snook are just thick, and the squid are thin. And as soon as you get in a little bit shallower. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is actually a really good squid too. I'm not sure if you saw that, but he just rocketed over to that. And that's our 
limit on squid is actually quite a nice squid. I was trying to get that in a little bit closer to the camera then so you could see, but he's actually a really nice squid, this one. Love that. Yeah, nice. He's a very solid little one. And we've got a little bit of a fountain display going on with the fella in the bucket. Let's see how we go lifting this fella. So, cannot be bothered sitting down. This guy is very aggressive. And it is just so cool when they're this thick. And uh, if we get this guy in, that's our limit of squid. There you go. Oh, you're taking the piss a little bit there, mate. Oh, the last squid does that to me. Look at the state of it. Oh, boy. Well, um, this is probably going to be the end of the video. Maybe I might do a quick little filming thing back in there, but um, if it is the end of the video and you don't see anything else after this, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, there's still plenty more to learn. That's the beauty of fishing. But um, if you are a beginner, a kayak is a great way to get started. Great way to get on the water and catch some beautiful eating species like the ones that we got today. And uh, I really hope that you do enjoy or you at least learned something out of this video. Because, um, yeah my uh my favorite thing about the fishing hobby is helping others and helping others develop so um if you could show this video some love give it a like uh leave a comment on how you found it and um yeah thank you guys so much and check out the size of that snook following in